Hey guys, Ben here with a surprise bonus video. We have a brand new listing. It's a Gemini 105 MC lying here in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, I've got to get this video out ASAP. However, it will not a substitute or interrupt our regular upload schedule, so consider this a bonus. As usual, I'll have a full spec sheet for you down in the description, so be sure to check that out. As always, thanks for tuning in, and I hope you enjoy the tour. All right, so we're here in lovely Fort Lauderdale taking a look at a Gemini 105 MC by the name of Gone Away. I'll try your attention to the bow first. Notice we have a fortress anchor and of course no trampolines. This is a solid boat. There's no real space for trampolines and uh, you don't really need them. We'll take a look at the uh, tunnel clearance real quick. Walking around to get on board, you notice that the gate on this boat is actually forward, not back. So we'll push down and give ourselves a good shove. All right, so looking at the solid foredeck area, you've got a pair of dolphin seats, and these actually fold up and down so you can access the cleats here. Here is your anchor locker with the spare Danforth anchor as well as your line and road. And you've got a second bow locker here. With the rest of your fenders, cleaning supplies, etc. etc. Now one of the things that you've no doubt noticed is that this boat has these weird spider web things. Those are what's called spider cracks. And unfortunately, it, it turns out that virtually every Gemini 105 MC that was made by Performance Cruising, that is basically from what, 1999 to 2010, this was made by Hunter, as opposed to the newer ones which are made by Catalina, suffers from this defect. It has nothing to do with maintenance. It's purely a manufacturing defect, and it's basically just cosmetic. Uh, if you're buying a 105 MC, you will deal with this, and there's no way around it. That is pretty much about the, uh, the uh, big gotcha here. We'll go on to more positive stuff now. So we've got a pair of hatches that open up to the interior here. Uh, four shrouds that secure your rig. This boat is rigged more like a monohull than a catamaran, so. Coming back down to earth, you'll notice a matching stack pack that goes with the uh, similarly black jib. The sails and rigging on this boat are actually original. However, the mainsail is actually in pretty decent shape just because this boat was purchased in Maryland and it was only really used seasonally, so She's actually spent the majority of her life on the hard. Bit of a, a bit of a dock queen, if you will be, but this is how northern boating works. I'll, notice, I'll note that you have these hatches here that open up for ventilation into the cockpit. Now one other thing you may have noticed is, Ben, the side decks on this boat are too narrow for me. Well. That's not really where you're probably going to be stepping because there's this step here. And generally, if you need to get to the foredeck area, you walk along this bit of non-skid this way. Also notice that you have a uh, jib car. Your jib cars run on tracks, so you can move the cars back and forward to adjust the shape of your foresail. The cockpit on this boat is, of course, enclosed by this hard dodger here. And the previous owners added this dinghy davit system, which also doubles as a bench since the wind is not cooperating, but that's, that's how it's supposed to look. Neat place to sit and relax. And you can also extend this custom dodger that was added to the railing that is here. So again, you have your traveler that runs on the aft of the cockpit. Here is just another storage lazarette. If we walk down the sugar scoops, give you a good look at the dinghy davit system.
as usual, it's a uh, busy day on the new river. Hauling boats in and out as the guys do. And here in this little uh, lazarette is how you access your rudder stocks. Finishing up our tour of the exterior, we'll look at a good look at the cockpit. This is a sort of bowl style cockpit, so you've got seating and uh, 270 degrees all around. Your helm seat is forward up there as well as you've got a suite of Raymarine electronics and a Garmin chart plotter which is opposite the window and your Westerbeek tachometer. This boat is indeed a Westerbeek. It's actually a diesel, which is housed in this compartment. Notice the insulation on here, nice and good condition. And the motor has a little over about a thousand hours on it. Now, if this boat is a diesel, you might be asking, how is it connected to the water? Well, Gemini uses this uh, sort of funky, but kind of clever solution called a select out drive. And that's what it looks like. It's kind of like a stern drive, but luckily most of the, uh, you know, uh, finicky stuff is not underwater. So you don't have to worry about that. Like most stern drive owners do. And I'll note as well that the dinghy is included in this sail. Got a Yamaha 9.9 uh, outboard here and good size dinghy for two to three people. The exterior done, we'll head inside now. All right, entering the interior, we're first greeted by the main seating area in the salon, where you have a fold out table where each of the leaves comes out as such. This boat is technically a deck salon as the main seating area is elevated and you have wraparound views on either side. And yes, the table as well also does, is adjustable, so it does come down if you want to make this a day bed or a uh, watch keeping area. I'll note the headroom here first in this little entryway is about 6'2", which is as tall as I am, so I max this out. You've got your electrical control panels on the port side, and beneath there you have this little ottoman that opens up to access your AC. It's nice and cool in here before I turned off the AC to minimize shooting noise. Uh, this forward window here is of course in place so that you can look through this window, which is your helm seat and get the correct forward visibility. Now headroom on this boat was an important uh, consideration when Tony Smith designed it. So even on a narrow beam catamaran, you know, it is galley down that helps maximize headroom, an important feature. So this stove is not gimbaled, by the way. You don't need to gimbal the stove. There's enough stability. So it's a two burner stove with the oven here. And galley down is really, I think, is of course the only configuration that makes sense on a cat like this. So you've got a dual basin sink here, a drop in freezer here, and the rest of your galley storage is over here. Looking forward, you've got the uh, forward stateroom where you have this window here, helps let in, lets in lots of light. The aforementioned hatches for ventilation. Nice queen size berth. And there's lots of storage on this boat. There's actually storage in this locker as well, as well as all of that. An executive decision was made to sacrifice that cabin for storage, but I have to get this boat sold ASAP, so just pretend it isn't there. The layout is mirrored on either side, so that stateroom is pretty much identical to this one. This is a three, again, three cabin, one head layout. 
on the opposite uh, in the uh, porthole we have more storage here and you may be wondering what is this little section here why isn't there any storage there well that is where the centerboard trunk is this boat is centerboard which is a bit of a rarity but it does help reduce the draft heavily and make it so that this boat is good at gunk holing aka going to really shallow draft areas and like the Gulf Coast, Florida Keys, etc., etc., that sort of thing. Giving you a quick tour around the boat's single head. You also have this wand shower here. All right, so that will wrap it up for the Gemini 105 MC Gone Home. So if you have any questions about her or want to go see the boat, do drop me a line. If you like the video, leave a like. If you dislike the video, leave a dislike, leave a comment. And as always, I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks.